Uh, hello everyone. Today I will talk about neural network optimization and uh, a few more words about me. I'm highly interested in computer vision for both 2D and 3D and mostly focused on edge devices. And since almost all neural networks take a high amount of time to compute, uh, it is required to some, apply some optimization to increase the uh, performance of neural networks and the whole system. And today I will give some insights uh, into the neural network optimizations and some features and methods that I have used and faced during my work. Uh, so basically there are three diff different types of uh, hardware for neural network training and inference, uh, such as CPU, GPU, and uh, hardware specifically designed for neural network uh, inference and training like TPU from Google and different uh, mobile uh, neural processing units. And mostly I will focus today on CPU and GPU since they are most, uh, more popular and uh, more widespread and used almost in every device. Uh, CPU is a more widespread platform and it has some features like SIMD and Fuse Multiply Add uh, that uh, can provide very fa fast and uh, high performance. SIMD stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data. Uh, as it says, uh, we can apply the same operation to the different uh, data. Uh, so basically we used uh, data parallelism here. Uh, however, we can't apply different operations to the same data. Uh, and it means that uh, we don't use any concurrency here. And uh, fuse multiply add it's uh, a floating point uh, multiplication addition operation uh, that is per performed in one step uh, with uh, a single rounding operation in the end. Uh, also, CPU is uh, more flexible for developing and prototyping. Uh, some unique operations that are used in neural networks uh, should be added manually to a lot of different frameworks. Uh, so it's more simpler on CPU at these operations. And uh, also it's a uh, default choice for small size models. Uh, contrary GPU is uh, uh, has more logical cores than CPU. It provides high optimization through data parallelization and operation parallelization and has very high throughput. Uh, however, single GPU uh, core uh, much slower than CPU and the high throughput is uh, guaranteed by a lot of cores in GPU. Also, GPU performs work uh, uh, much more efficiently than CPU, which is a uh, kind of trend nowadays in neural networks training. It should be green and uh, very uh, power efficient. And also, uh, I would uh, recommend to use GPU for middle size and very uh, large uh, models with uh, lots of operations. So basically uh, there are two different types of optimization that we can apply to neural networks. Uh, graph optimization and operation optimization. Uh, so one of the main operation is convolution. Uh, this operation is uh, kind of uh, the main operation in computer vision and especially convolutional neural networks. Uh, the, main, the main goal of this operation is to extract uh, some features from the image. Uh, it's uh, basically done by applying some uh, filter uh, over the image. Uh, you can, uh, uh, by specifying uh, special weights on this kernel filter, uh, you can detect different features, so for example, edges or uh, perform different uh, operations like uh, sharpening or smoothing the image. Uh, by combining several convolutional layers, we can construct uh, convolutional neural networks. 
Uh, however, typical convolutional neural networks consist not only of convolutional layers, but also there are different other uh, normalization layers, nonlinear layers, and etc. Uh, so, uh, uh, these layers uh, allows convolutional neural networks train uh, better, provide uh, give better accuracy, and so on. However, the convolution operation itself is uh, uh, very expensive in, in terms of time. Uh, so from this chart, you may see that the time taken by each uh, operation in the typical convolution uh, neural network. Uh, basically, convolution uh, operation takes almost 85% of overall time. So, uh, probably the most uh, obvious step uh, in the neural network optimization is to optimize convolution operation itself. Uh, so there are basically a lot of different algorithms for convolution optimization, uh, but three of them are the most popular. It's GEM, Fourier, and uh, Vinograd. Um, let's start from the GEM algorithm. So basically, uh, the image is presented as a three-dimensional uh, array with uh, RGB channels, uh, red, green, blue. And the image size here is just four by four for simplicity. Uh, and uh, we apply convolution, this uh, orange uh, filter, uh, to the image which is, uh, with size two by two. And here we have uh, step size uh, equals one. So we move this filter over the image with the step equals one. The gem algorithm is based on the image uh, to column and image to row function. So basically they uh, uh, transform the image uh, part of the image to uh, the respective row or column. Um, after, uh, and we proceed with such operation over the whole image and uh, uh, move this whole image to the uh, two dimensional array. Uh, also, we transform the kernel to the two dimensional, uh, to the one dimensional array. So here uh, we have small kernel. Uh, we have a 2D image. Uh, image transformed to, to D. And we perform matrix multiplication, just one single ma uh, matrix multiplication, and uh, receive some uh, one dimensional uh, matrix, uh, which we then uh, uh, convert to the required shape and receive the output. So basically uh, what's gem uh, like, more concrete, we just uh, replace a lot of uh, different small matrix multiplications, uh, a lot of operations into just uh, one big uh, matrix multiplication. Uh, almost similar idea is used in the Fourier algorithm. Uh, we have here our input image. Uh, we have a kernel, which we want to use for the input image. Uh, we transform the input image in the Fourier domain. We also transform kernel in the Fourier domain. Uh, then we multiply these two images element-wise in the Fourier domain, obtain two-dimensional matrix, and then convert this matrix back to uh, the special domain and obtain the result of the convolution. Uh, and the last one is Vinograd is the approach is also very similar to Fourier and GEM. So basically we have a Vinograd domain here uh, and we take some part of the image. Uh, we take filter and convert both part of the image and filter to the Fourier domain, uh, to the, sorry, Vinograd domain. So in the Vinograd domain, we have uh, two matrices of the same size. Uh, here we have uh, also element-wise element multiplication. 
uh, we, uh, and we obtain the result matrix in the Vinograd domain. And this matrix is converted by into the original domain, special domain, and we obtain the result. Uh, which method to choose uh, mostly depends on the specific platform you choose and uh, usually the, this kind of optimized algorithm are already implemented in the hardware specific libraries. Uh, another class of optimization is uh, data layout optimization, uh, sorry, graph optimization. And uh, the first thing you may try with uh, neural network is to change data layout. Uh, data layout usually affects uh, on how data is stored in the memory. Uh, for example, for NHWC layout, uh, firstly, I should mention what is NHWC. So basically, we have a four dimensional matrix where N is uh, batch size, H and W is height and width of the image, and uh, C is number of channels in this image. So basically for this, uh, for this case, uh, the first pixel of each uh, channel will be in the same, uh, will be nearby the previous pixel. So basically the last uh, index in the layout uh, type uh, specifies uh, which pixel will be nearby in the memory. Uh, the best uh, data layout usually depends uh, on type of the optimization for convolution you use. And uh, the correct data layout usually used to optimize uh, memory mo manipulation and not to lose time to access uh, the different parts of the data. So for example, if we use uh, first data layout, however, we need to uh, using our convolution operation, we need to access not uh, first pixel, but we need to access the 20th pixel. We need to, uh, it will take more time to access this data. Um, when data goes through the neural network, its uh, shape usually changes. And the operation uh, with relation to data shape change uh, can be divided into three main groups. Uh, it's a layout obvious operation, uh, which uh, doesn't affect uh, any, in any manner. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter for uh, this operation, what is the shape of the data. So it's uh, usually it's activation functions like ReLU or softmax. Uh, layout to tolerant operations, uh, it's operations which are uh, usually hard coded by, uh, by the, like, uh, is not very affected by the uh, shape of the data itself, but uh, the shape of the data is changing. And layout depending, it's usually hard coded by the user, uh, by the programmer, and we change the shape of the data completely. And uh, usually in the optimization library, there are some specific functions for each data layout. And for example, on the image uh, on the right, you may see that uh, here we have some convolution operation for specific layout and for specific number of uh, channels uh, in the image. And this allows to write more efficient code and the operation proceeds faster. And also it's a good manner to use uh, number of channels in uh, uh, divided by eight or 16. Uh, another type of operation uh, optimization, it's operation fusion. Uh, uh, we can opt uh, fuse uh, multiple operations into a single function uh, without saving some intermediate steps of the ca calculation. Uh, this optimization enables uh, bait better sharing of computation, uh, remove some intermediate allocations in memory which uh, may appear, uh, and uh, uh, reduce uh, 
um, some uh, time requires for launching this uh, some functions and data uh, which is required for each operation. Uh, the operations uh, can be classified into four categories. Uh, injective, where we map one value to another. Uh, reduction, where the we reduce number of uh, input data. Uh, some uh, complex out fusible operation and opaque. When these operators are defined, uh, the com uh, compiler usually uh, cat uh, categorizes uh, each operation and uh, some operations can be fused. For example, we can fuse uh, one injective operation into another or a reduction operation can be fused uh, with uh, some uh, input injective operation and so on. Um, According to this, we can usually fuse uh, all operations uh, conveniently. And uh, for example, we have uh, a convolutional layer here with some uh, input image uh, and filter. And afterwards we have some bias addition operation. And what compiler usually does, it just uh, converts uh, these two operation into a single one. Um, and the advantage of this is that we don't need to wait for the next operation to perform and we don't need to allocate some new uh, memory for this function to run. Uh, another approach for model optimization is to use some lower precision uh, than for 32 bit. For example, mixed precision or for 16 bit. Um, it is possible to use this precision during uh, training or inference. Uh, typically with the mixed precision, we can achieve up to four times speed up uh, in cost of time and two times uh, memory size decrease of the neural network. Uh, most uh, deep learning frameworks support this feature as easy to use and uh, uh, we can use it and just uh, receive some speed up. And uh, the main advantage also of the mixed precision is that usually the uh, accuracy of the algorithm is not changing uh, from when we are moving from float 32 to the mixed precision. Uh, also, we can uh, achieve some more optimization using even uh, lower pre precision like integer, we can use uh, int8, int4, or even uh, binary networks. Uh, however, uh, this reduction in um, precision uh, usually uh, le leads to some uh, lower precision, and it usually could be a challenge to train a very efficient neural network uh, with uh, oh, such, such low precision. Uh, however, uh, the speed up we can gain is uh, very uh, high and sometimes uh, here we have a trade-off between the speed and accuracy we want to achieve. And the last uh, option for neural network optimization is pruning. Uh, so it's basically dropping some weights uh, of the neural network. Uh, there are two main approaches for pruning. Uh, we have uh, structures and a structure pruning. Um, structure pruning allows to just remove some um, blocks of the neural networks like uh, some um, channels of the convolutional neural network, some part of the uh, other layers. Uh, and uh, usually it's not just a random process. And we remove some weights that um, doesn't affect the neural network uh, very much. Um, so also you may see on the charts on the plots here that uh, uh, on the x-axis is uh, 
percentage of weights which is remaining in the neural network and we can drop the percentage of weights up to uh, seven even percent without losing uh, accuracy a lot uh, which a very good speed up mm, however this area is also still under uh, development and it's very popular in the scientific uh, community and uh, the last part of my talk is uh, on about how to use all these optimizations uh, for neural networks uh, uh, luckily uh, there are a lot of already developed uh, tools for doing uh, such optimizations uh, they are tvm tensor t and many others uh, so what is TVM? It's a uh, recently developed optimization library for neural network optimization. It supports uh, different platforms, uh, mobile, GPU, CPU. Um, it supports also different frameworks, so KFP, TensorFlow, uh, MXNet, and so on. It uh, performs uh, operation optimization, graph optimization, and uh, the core feature which I would uh, mm, kind of recommend to use is uh, uh, Auto TVM, which uh, searches the best uh, parameter for, of best of kind of best configuration uh, of uh, optimization options uh, for your model to gain the best. Uh, accuracy and uh, the lowest speed for your network and the platform you select. Uh, usually it outperforms uh, uh, standard approaches for different standard tools and approaches of different libraries uh, for different platforms. So on the uh, plot on the left, you may see that it outperforms uh, TensorFlow Lite uh, on CPU, this one plot is for CPU for different uh, neural, neural networks. And also it uh, outperforms uh, TensorFlow and MXNet optimization for GPU. Uh, TensorRT is uh, another library for neural network optimization. Uh, it, uh, this framework supports also uh, uh, multiple um, deep learning libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, and uh, even OMX uh, format. Uh, this uh, uh, framework provides uh, uh, layer and tensor fusion, uh, weights and activation, uh, some uh, management, uh, also, it provides some um, optimization to memory layout and allows to execute your model in uh, uh, multiple streams on CUDA. And I should mention also that TensorRT is a library that uh, was created uh, by NVIDIA and mostly focused on optimization for uh, GPU and for various types of GPU. Uh, this library is, uh, shows very good uh, performance uh, increase for different uh, neural networks. Uh, it works uh, even better in most cases for uh, GPU, even better than TBM. Uh, it supports uh, different type of precision like 462, 416, mixed precision, int 80 and int 8. And uh, there are also a lot of additional features like uh, data loading, uh, working with video stream and so on. And um, to sum everything up, uh, so I would recommend to use TVM as a default choice that for optimization of the neural network since it supports uh, different uh, platforms and uh, usually easy to go. Uh, and after TVM is very uh, interesting feature of this library, which uh, can significantly reduce the uh, execution time of your neural network. And 
uh, for more for better optimization for each uh, platform you select it's better to use um, libraries that were developed specific, specifically for this uh, hardware like uh, tensor t for gpu or intel mkl for cpu um, it's better uh, to select uh, which platform or hardware you will run before you will design your model because uh, uh, it is required to um, look what operations usually are supported by each, each platform uh, because uh, I faced some problem when we tried to port model from what one form platform to another uh, because uh, some operations were not supported and it was required to write everything manually and uh, it's kind of good uh, approach to optimize your model is to use some quantization or mixed precision, precision uh, during training because it mostly will not affect your uh, accuracy of the model because if you will try to do quantization operating afterwards like for a trained model uh, it will decrease the performance of the model uh, so basically that's all thank you for your attention and if you have any question you may answer